The Power of Sequences, The Base Sequence, and Bending the Rules, The Unspoiler Alert. Before expounding on the current topic, we invite you, the student, to pause the clip and work out the upper voices of the four bass lines shown here. Also, transpose the same bass lines to the designated keys and work out the upper voices anew, following the rules in the transposed keys. You will end up with a total of 12 examples and an unspoiled start to today's topic. Right. Now that you have worked out the four exercises and eight transpositions from the previous slide, we'll zero in on the fourth one. We've marked the repetitive intervals of the bass line from bar three on. Up a sixth and down a fifth. Up a sixth, whether major or minor, and down a fifth, whether perfect or diminished, and so on. Listen. Due to the predictable repetition of intervals in the bass, at ever higher scale degrees, the voice leading of the upper voices also tends to repeat in a similar fashion. A repetitive pattern such as this is called, in conventional music theory parlance, a sequence. How many repetitions of the pattern do you see? Usually we would try to avoid doubling the leading tone in outer voices, and especially when there is a bass leap on the downbeat in bar 6, however, the sequential pattern allows us to make an exception. Think about it. Maintaining the logical pattern of the sequence takes precedence over the do not double the leading tone rule. Do you hear it? In the example we just heard, the soprano began at the third above the bass, as indicated by the Arabic figure of three above the first chord. It is also possible to start the soprano at the fifth above the bass, as shown here, then work out new upper voices for the same bass sequence. Though the tenor does reach the upper limits of his range, he should be fine. By contrast, what happens when we start the soprano with the octave of the bass? Anything wrong here? First of all, this introduces multiple instances of hidden octaves to the sequence between the two outer voices. This is one rule we don't want to bend. If that weren't bad enough, a logical continuation of this sequence eventually leads to violation of the range of the upper voices, and this doesn't work when writing for SATB, that is, for soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. Which brings us to an exception to the rule having to do with retaining common tones in the same voice. From bar 1 to 2 in this example, the tenor does not retain the common tone D of the 5 and 2 chords. Instead, we transfer the common tone D to the soprano voice one octave higher. This happens again from bars 2 to 3 in regards to the 6 and 3 chords. We do not retain the common tone E in the tenor voice, but transfer the E note to the soprano. The hidden octaves are okay here as they are introduced through contrary motion with the bass. <laughs> Here is the same bass sequence, this time with common tones retained in their respective voices according to the rule. Either way is acceptable, but now you see how, when there is a sequence in the bass, deviations from some rules are allowed. The sequence is indeed a powerful tool.
With soprano beginning at the fifth, it is still possible to work out the upper voices of the sequence and respect the rules on common tones and voice ranges. How? By transposing the entire sequence to the key of G major. <laughs> Here is a final example showing another angle on the practicality of using sequences. The common tone between the 2 and 5, bars 2 and 4, would normally be the note D, but retaining D in the alto forces the soprano to step up by a whole tone into a hidden octave. Soprano stepping up by a whole tone into a hidden octave with the bass is not allowed. Not only that, the tenor voice is forced upwards as far as the note B which is totally outside his range. Contrary motion between bass and upper voices is therefore necessary in bars 2 and 4 to avoid the hidden octave and also keep the tenor within proper bounds. A word of warning. Bass sequences are seductive and can easily be overused. Leaning too much or too often on anything repetitive betrays a lack of artistic imagination or mental laziness, both of which are snares to creativity. Don't get caught. There you have it. We have reached the point which in conventional theory would be the midterm. Do you want an exam? After a pause, the course will resume and move on to introduce first and second inversions, figured bass, the minor mode, and so forth. Things will get interesting. Meanwhile, here is food for thought. For practice, serious students are advised to work out the upper voices to these seven writing exercises from pages 42 to 43 of Solomon Yavison's Elementary Principles of Harmony. This is a public domain textbook. A reference and legal download link are in the description box. Add Roman numerals, watch for bass sequences, and deal with them as per this lecture. Thank you for watching and for participating.